Hello everyone, welcome to the magical world of chess in game studies. In front of you is a truly amazing piece of study by celebrated composer Vladimir Korolkov, published in 1951. Before we start, I would like uh, to suggest you to think and analyze in between the video by pausing. By that way, you'd be able to derive maximum pleasure and the best possible training in chess analysis. Okay, let's take a look at the position. It's wide to move and win. Now please pause and think about the basic ideas for both sides and try to come up with some continuation. Okay, white here should actually play f7. Uh, instead, if he plays something like bishop b2, rook takes f6 will guarantee a draw for black. Now that c, once f1 is played, uh, f7 is played, black is uh, pretty much forced uh, to play rook a6 check. Why? Because instead if he tries to stop the pawn by playing rook f6, bishop b2 uh, pinning the pawn will, uh, pinning the rook will uh, seal his fate. Now if there is there's one more try for black which is after f7 if c plays rook to g8, now pawn takes g8, king takes g8 and any 7 check forking the king and the bishop. Uh, wins uh, for white. Now, after our a6, what do you think will be the best move for white? Do you think he's gonna win very easily in many continuations? So, what I want to do, ask you to do is to just pause here for a while and analyze deeply what would be the best way to defend for white. I can tell you that it's not that obvious. Okay, actually whites should play bishop a3 here. Now what's going on over here? Let's say why not other moves. Let's say if instead of bishop a3 white plays king to b1, now bishop takes f5 check is definitely not good for white. So the most obvious thing that occurs more to most of us is king b2. Now why is it bad? Now thing is that after rf6 now, now the pawn is stopped. Um, please take note of this fact that it, this is often missed while analyzing in your mind as rf6 did not work earlier in another variation which we saw uh, what usually happens is our mind usually skips this move in this variation too. So since nothing works by process of elimination we arrive at bishop a3. Okay so rook takes a3 king to b2 is the answer. Now you might think that it's all over for black, there's no more checks or anything like that. Um, so uh, why should black continue? So please pause and try to find the best continuation for black. Okay, the answer is rook a2 check. Now because if white is gonna capture on a2, like king into a2, what's going to happen is bishop e6 checks, loses the pawn and the game is drawn. Instead, king goes to c3, what happens is rook c2, check again, the rook cannot be taken, bishop of bishop into f5, check to king, if king goes to b4, again the rook continues giving the check and if the king goes to d4, rd2 check, ke5, rd8, now rook 
controls the back rank now it's going to be a draw so what is the best way well, how can white escape the, from these checks the way is to go to king c1 so if black tries keeping check like this rook a1 check then you keep going on to the dark squares here uh, king d2 and for example if you go I mean you actually cannot go to king b2 because again rook b1 check kc3 rook b3 check kd4 d3 check K, king d3 bf5 check etc etc so this this is similar to the variation we looked earlier on so king should actually go to king d2 and again rook a2 check you go to ke3 rook a3 check kf4 rook a4 check kg5 now comes the pivotal moment rook g4 check now please stop and uh, analyze deeply about uh, the best possible continuation for white okay I hope you identify best possible continuation as king at six exclamation mark because if king takes on g4 bishop into f5 king into f5 king g7 ke6 kf8 it's a draw because after kf6 it's still mate if kh5 instead what happens is Rook g8 and e7 forking the rook and the bishop rook f8 and g6 check kg7 and there is no way for white to proceed it's gonna be a draw so the point is after you play king h6 and white black tries the same continuation rook d8 you might think it's going to be a draw but there is one more final brilliance to finish things off that says an e7 check b e6 and f into g8 check bishop into g8 and n g6 check mate now that's what you call a masterpiece okay let's go back a little bit and see it is instead of rg8 which happened if rg6 checks then king into g6 bishop into f5 kh6 is winning for white and there is just no way to escape from this so the crowning moment comes with in g6 checkmate and i hope you all enjoy this fascinating study in fact, uh, in the book Secrets of Spectacular Chess, uh, the authors, uh, Grandmaster Jonathan Levitt and David Friedgood, say that, uh, quotation, if you have never seen this study before and fail to find it ex exciting, our only advice is to give up the game. You will have no future in chess. <laughs> now that's quite a statement. Okay. By the way, if you um, have not got the book, uh, uh, I would really suggest you to do so. It's a great book. And I actually posted a link on the side uh, in the video description. You can check it out. So, see you in next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.